Yes, and so welcome to Vasily's Garden. We've come out to Mount Eliza, folks. That's right, five minutes from my place. I wish. <laughs> but it was a beautiful drive and the sun's come out again. I'm here with Paris and Philip. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you too. Thank you, thank, thank you. you. Hello, you my too, dear. Vasily. Nice Hello. to meet you. You too. Now, we've come out here to check out your garden because you've invited us on this wonderful parcel of land that you have here. First, how long have you been here? 14 months. 14 months. And you've come from what area before? Uh, generally around the Surrey Hills, Mod Albert, Campbell okay. area. Okay. Yes. What, what, what caused you guys to come out here? Is it retirement, relax, change of lifestyle? Well, I've come from the Sandringham area and I always loved the beach. Yeah. And I said, there's no way I'm going to live in the, in, in the squashy city area you... with no water yeah. around. So we have the best of everything here, the freeways and the Is... beach just further down and everything is really close to us. Oh. How big is the land? Uh, it's approximately 3,000 square metres. Okay, three quarters um, of an acre. Three quarters mm. of an acre. Yep. Um, it has amazing bird life and duck life and, uh, you know, that the, here on a regular basis, you know, like last Saturday there was 30 ducks on the pool. Wow. Mm. Wow. And they just come here? Yep. They yes. just come in. No issues at no all? Issue no issues at all. And no. you can walk out and see them? Yes. With, 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 with they actually follow me because they know that I have leftover foods. And I'll just put it nicely there around are the trees. You, you can the see birds, some. Are you? No, they follow me. They train me. Like you're going to train me today? I can no, 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 no. You're not no? a duck. I got it. Ah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking birds here, now, aren't yes. we? <laughs> last, uh, last September, October, we had uh, mum and dad here with 16 little babies mm. living down in the corner mm. and wandering into the pool every day. That would have been beautiful. But absolutely sensational. Yeah. Absolutely sensational. So that's one of the reasons, if not one of the mm. main reasons, to being out here. Now, are you? both working? Are yes. you practicing? What yes. do you do? Uh, well, I'm actually the CEO of a radiology group. Okay. Um, yep. A very uh, a group that's uh, emerging dramatically in uh, in Victoria, and um, okay. we operate out of Box Hill and okay. Box Hill pro uh, public hospitals, as well as uh, private practices in uh, Victoria and New South Wales. And this is a way of you relaxing in a garden? Oh, look, I love the garden. Yeah. You know, um, my my uh, father passed away when I was. 13. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so I, I, my mother was very passionate about the garden, so yeah. I learnt Lovely. the hard way by having to mow the lawns and yeah. do all the gardening. Yeah. So spend a bit just, of time. It's just developed, and, yeah. and right now I enjoy, you know, enjoy uh, uh, starting something from scratch and yeah. developing it and watching it grow and, Good and stuff. you know, going around. You know, it sounds a bit weird, but talking to the plants. You do that? Yeah, okay, so I'm not the only crazy one out there. <laughs> no, 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 There's two no, of us, no, folks. No, no. Literally talk to the plants yeah. and it's amazing what you see a little bit further down the track. Yeah, and, and uh, you see the development, how they respond. Yes, So 14-month-old garden pre predominantly. Yeah. Basically. You've yes. got a lot of advanced trees, but there's a lot of work that's been done in changes and upgrades. Mm -hmm. And your involvement in the garden as well, yeah? Yes, yeah, yes, you're absolutely. It? Well, it's good exercise. It gets me away from the computer because I'm okay. on the desk practically yeah. 18 hours a day. Okay. So what do you do? Well, I'm a companion bird behaviourist. Ducks, gotcha. No, not ducks, as in no. pet birds. Oh, pet birds, yes, okay. Yes, but companion birds. I help people who have problems with their birds and I help them so they can both coexist and get along. Okay. And I'm a companion bird um, activist. Okay. Or I should Good. say campaigner. Campaigner, yeah. Again, it's the same thing. I'm trying to e educate yeah. <laughs> people about, you know, if you have parrots or any sort of bird, um, to be a so they can both get along. People actually buy birds from wherever they do, and they think that the bird will do what they want. doesn't work that way. No. Birds have their own psychology, just like we have our own psychology. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, I'm also a, a human counsellor, not only a bird counsellor. We need a bit of that. I do, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. well, we're always changing in life and, and yeah. life is changing so fast and yeah. we're learning a lot more. The yeah. internet has opened a lot of doors for us. Yeah. So I'm helping people holistically, whether it be through um, Reiki also, mm -hmm. also Reiki, mm -hmm. healing, mm -hmm. and um, also, you know, you can actually, and also as a massage therapist, okay. but you can do it all at once because it's not just helping someone with their life, it's also physically, all the stresses, as yeah. you know, would collate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in our... We absorb into our body into and Into our structure. nerves, our muscles yeah. and all that. Yeah. So you need to do it holistically, it's no... Okay. Yes, everything... I do it in the garden. I dig a big hole. But you see, but you talk the to tree, the plants. And I feel good. And there's your counselling, you talk to the plants. <laughs> and if I'm a bit tired, I'll stick a tomato plant. There and you a go. smaller hole. Good on you. <laughs> different things work for different people. Everyone's different. That's right. And today, what's working for us is a tour around the garden, folks. Sit back, relax. We're going to take a tour around this wonderful place and see the transformation that's happened over the last 14 months. Well, when we first arrived here, this yeah. was just absolute... Um, um, you couldn't mow the lawn, you couldn't do anything. You okay. actually... 
All right, I'm standing on a hill here. Yep. Well, it seems like a hill. The, the property, that's the back boundary. Correct. All right, and we're two and a half metres above your house ground level, floor level. Correct. Was it this high always? Uh, it, no, it actually went down. Uh, Steps? No, or it's just, just right. rubble, total rubble. Total rubble. So what we did, what I did was actually build a retaining wall yep. to, to get me started. Okay. So, and then levelled off the uh, bottom section so that I could actually do something with it. St split level. So you got a metre drop, then another metre, or two, uh, yeah, 800 yeah. drop to a metre. Yeah, so then progressively I started filling um, uh, this, this hole that was here, which was just between two and three uh, feet deep, or a metre. Yeah, yep. I filled it with bricks and things like that to get my drainage, and then I've been progressively filling it up with soil to level it off. Okay, so, so it's compacting over time, because this will take a little bit of time. You could not walk there, Vasily. It was literally like this, the ground. Okay. We've raised it, we've put a lot of soil here, and like yeah. Philip said, any bricks right. or anything, left over. You guys did this yourselves? We did it all ourselves. Everything. We'll, Everything. We'll borrow on us. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. Good on you. Everything. Yeah. And yep. then yep. what we progressively started to do was to make this what I call a little bit of the lime and, and lemon tree line with the olives. So okay. we, have, we have our lime tree here. On the end there. There's and we have the, yeah. the and the olives, lemon but you've tree. lost one over there unfortunately. Yeah, no, that one's that's yeah. gone. Is, we, that, is that from wet feet you think or is it just because? Uh, I think it's a bit of a combination of uh, a number of things. Yeah, sort of bad weather. Yeah. Can't it's, save it. Uh, all right, let's have a look. I think it needs another one. Oh, I get so sad when they die. I know. All you can do with this one is cut it back to its stem, yeah. to the main trunk there, because you can see it's yellowing off there, unfortunately. Yeah. It might be wet feet. Are you watering these too often? No, maybe? no. At no, all? Or not, is it just because of the weather we've uh, had lately? Just, the there's rain? been a lot of water lately here, yeah. but prior to that, I've, I've just watered yeah. them you know, yeah, sparingly. Sparingly, okay. So what so, we were trying to do was to have the lemon tree up there, yep. the lime tree here, yep. and the, the olives in the middle yeah. to actually start you know, developing something that is a little bit nice so that when you're inside, yeah. you can actually look out onto the, the roses yeah. because each of the roses is, is white, Camp David red, nice. white, Camp David red, see from the stems. and, and see so the on. So that their first, uh, their first blossoms were fantastic. Yeah. And uh, they've, they've only been in, you know, nine months. They're good size trunks on those for nine month old roses. Yeah, well, yeah. in the ground that is. So they've developed a fair bit since they've gone in. Yeah, you would have loved the flowers, because yeah. that's my office. You would have loved the flowers in spring or when it is that they've they come up. It was just beautiful. It just made it look magic over there. Any part of the house that you look out through in the windows, you find a picturesque garden. Correct. Mm. Yeah? That's been the theory. Yeah. That's been the practice that we've been uh, working on and we're slowly getting there because if you walk down this yeah. way a little Let's bit a little further look. and look down the side of the house, yeah. this whole area down here was just one weed after another. Now, it's winter. Uh, that's west. So is that north behind us? Yes, north. North, north over there. Yeah, no, north so, is that way. Whoa, the, the sun's west. over there. We've got west that side. Uh, west over there, so yeah, the sun's yeah. very low, so north that looks there. like it's, yeah. Mm. Northwest. Northwest is over there. So how much sun do you get over here? Uh, we don't get a lot of sun in, in, in this section, yeah. but further down we you get do. a lot of sun. Okay. In, in, particularly in the, the spring and the summertime, we get a lot of sun. And that's where we've, we've uh, slightly developed the veggie garden. Yeah. And which had, you know, was fantastic during the... Well, I'm, I'm looking at this place. You've got the potosphere and hedging going around the perimeter of the property, and that's looking fantastic. I love that. These are other ones that need to be cut back there. You've got a row of agate panthers. That wall was also what you built there? No, no, that wall was there. Okay. That wall was there. Wow, okay, so no excavation over there. So you've replanted that area. Yeah, the only excavation being down that end, which yeah. we can show you later, where I've actually built a veggie garden okay. and developed that accordingly. Okay. But this has been raised also here, Vasily. Yeah. This has been raised, this was again lower. Oh, it would have been a mess. And, and Philip put all the yeah. soil up here in bricks and all, yeah. and uh, has planted those plants in there. And he's also done the backing of the bamboo yeah. to be consistent with the bamboo along the veggie garden too. And, so and all the ash belting, we've, we've only done that in the last uh, three months because that was just rubble. And You've so we a lot le of work. So we leveled it off and, yeah. and, and put some drains so in. And you build retaining walls, you do retaining wall building with soil carting, wheelbarrowing, you lay asphalt. Fencing. Oh, I didn't do the asphalt. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's going to book that... you in for my next job site. No, 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 no. <laughs> but we've done the decking and yeah. you know, just about everything else there. You built the decking? Yeah. Bits and pieces, yeah. Good on you. Yes. Yeah, no, pr no problems. Just takes time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just takes time. <laughs> Hello 
Hi folks and welcome to the information desk of Sandy Rogers, naturopath and herbalist, brought to you through the Silly's Garden. The hustle and bustle that you hear in the background is all part of the environment down here. A friendly, receptive environment at the Silly's Garden, all helping people with their information on their nursery needs, their garden needs, and also, while I'm here, on their health needs. Well, today what we're going to look at is the biggest organ in the body, the skin. The biggest organ in the body should be able to be managed quite well with some very simple preparations. But often what we don't do is we don't prepare our skin to revive and rejuvenate. We're shedding cells day in, day out. And it's called the epidermal layer. It's this top layer that just sheds itself and then revival and regeneration comes in. But we should be able to give that epidermis a bit of a hand. And one of the best things to use to give that epidermis a bit of a hand and use this all year round, and I'd suggest once a month is a good thing to do as part of your health and well-being regime, is to get some really good quality cold-pressed coconut oil. Now there's one here that we've got here. It's a lovely, beautiful, extra virgin coconut oil. And you'll notice that it's solid. It's white, it's solid, it's thick, and it will do that. In heated temperatures, you can heat it right up, and it's lovely to cook with, particularly if you're doing Asian food. But let's convert this into a powerful medicine. Now, how do we do that? Well, something along the lines of a bit of a handful, don't worry about in our back to basics about specific amounts, bit of a handful, around about to say, fill the palm of the hand, get that in and rub it. It'll become oily. And as we're rubbing it, we then start putting it all over our body before you get into the shower. Now this is if you've got pretty good skin. But what if you've got irritated, dry, itchy skin, flaky skin? You've got too much of that flakiness there. Well, we can manage that as well. You simply get some extra virgin coconut oil. You get equal parts of raw sugar. You should have a lot of that raw sugar left over because if you've been watching the program, we know we're cutting down on sugar, so we'll have a lot left over. Equal parts coconut oil, equal parts raw sugar. Mix it together. Now, what's the role of raw sugar? Raw sugar becomes the irritant to cleanse and exfoliate the skin. But what about if you need to really lift some of those dead cells off? You don't need to go and have expensive beauty treatments. You're going to do this at home yourself. Back to basics is the key. So to a handful of the coconut oil, a handful of the sugar, we put in the squeeze of a couple of lemons for lemon juice. Why do we do that? Well, nature provided us with a wonderful healing acid. So we blend that in, put it in a little jar, and now simply scoop it out and massage over the entire body. Standing in the shower, massage over the entire body and exfoliate the skin. A real nice deep rubbing effect over the entire body. These dead layers of skin are going to start dropping off down to the shower, down the plug hole, away it goes. What are you going to be left with? revived and rejuvenated skin. But let's go back to the folks who've got really dry and irritated skin. Well, we need to add a little bit of another oil in our formula. So we have our handful of coconut oil, our handful of raw sugar, our squirt of some lemon. What we need to do is to maybe put a couple of tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil a lubricating oil to be able to heal and repair. So our combination, coconut oil, sugar, lemon, extra virgin olive oil, your pantry becomes your pharmacy. And in skin related conditions, this is safe to use across the board. Now how effective is this? The skin will be revived and rejuvenated. The oil that is in there, if required, is going to be lubricating if using the extra virgin olive oil. Use good quality stuff here, folks. 
The other thing is, is that always use a vegetable-based sorbeline to moisturise and tone. So we get out of the shower, pat ourselves dry, get a simple vegetable base, I stress vegetable base, sorbeline, massage that around your whole body that's a little bit moist, moisture attracts moisture. So that sorbeline's going to absorb itself into the body and revive and renew that skin. You can look years younger by doing something like this. Use it on your face, your hands, your feet, your entire body. Don't miss any part. It's very important, very safe, very effective. And I'm telling you folks, it's back to basics at its best. So until next time, find happiness in every moment and look after that skin. Once a month is a good time. In warmer months, maybe once a fortnight. Cooler months, once a month and you will be rewarded with healthy, vibrant skin. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, in today's recipe, I'm using half a custard apple, half an orange with the skin off this time, a handful of pomegranate seeds. When cleaning a pomegranate, it can get a little messy, so putting some gloves on will help to keep your hands clean. One mandarin, no skin at all. One glass of ice and one glass of water. Pop the lid on and blend until smooth. Pomegranates are great for oily or dry skin and help keep the skin looking young. They contain 16% of your daily vitamin C needs. Pomegranates are higher in antioxidants than green tea, making them effective in preventing prostate cancer. Pomegranates are also high in vitamin K, which is good for bone health. They relieve inflammation and the magnesium content is great for muscle aches. For those who like a bit of spice, a teaspoon of chilli powder would go great with this smoothie. For more recipes like this, just visit our website or our Facebook page. See you next week. I love the hedges. Do you do the pruning yourself? Yes, I do all the pruning myself. Um, Even the, uh, the, the conifer? Yes. Wow. How long does it take you? Well, to do the whole property, it takes me about four to five hours to do it properly from That's go to work. That's a huge job, and you knock that over in four to five hours. You're pretty efficient. It's yeah. not by hand, it's electric. Or no, no, it's, it's an electric. Power. electric yeah. And, you know, I've, I've got it down to a fine art how I can go through and yeah. providing it, it. I do it three, four times a year, so okay. I just keep it fine and, yeah. and it so comes, along, yeah. comes along really well. Oh, that's good. And, and watering all this place? Well, watering is, uh, has become a lot easier because we knew we had a water tank when we came here. Yeah. We didn't quite understand the, uh, the breadth of it and we found we had 50,000 litres of water in a, in a concrete water tank that had never actually been connected to anything. Uh, Below ground? Below ground, which I'll show you okay. a little bit further down. So right here, this is water, is tank water. Fantastic! Which I pump up here and just utilise the whole Did you lot. run the lines everywhere? Uh, the but lines? There were parts, some of the lines were in, some had to be connected, some had to be run further. And uh, so we've done all that. And, uh, and so this is all now watered off the field. That is excellent, because it's so important to be able to keep the moisture up, especially on a sloping ground like this. To see this place so green and vibrant, even though it's still winter, I know there's a lot of moisture in here, these plants still need that extra water than you would just get from the rainfall. Ah, oh, yes, and, yeah. and, uh, and right now the water tank's full. Beautiful, beautiful. Absolutely full. Let's go and check out your decking. Not bad workmanship. I have to say the levels are perfect. The gapping is really good. And the lines on the nails, you did the string line there, didn't you? You actually marked it or did you use a ruler for each one? Uh, just about every, everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything to make sure that, um, okay. that, that it was in line, yeah. level, and yeah. that it actually did line up with the, 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 rest the of deck the that was there. All right, so where, where are we as part of the, of the house is concerned? Is, is this the back part, the front side? Side. Front side. side. Front side. Okay, and this is where you keep all your birds? Yes, they come out here, but it's a bit cold for them today. Right, now, before this decking went down, what was here? Just just lawn. Okay, just, just physical lawn. lawn. But okay. there was a structure, okay. very similar to the structure um, near the Over front there. gate, uh, that was around here. So we, we were able to pull it down. Yeah. It took a bit of... Uh, 
uh, manoeuvring to get it down without going through everything under the sun. But I was able to use all the, uh, the, the pieces the timber. of the timber yeah. Yeah. as part of the underneath part here. The framework? Yeah, part of the framework. How because it was all cypress. Yeah, OK. Oh, well, it went right. It, it last. went right. And how, you've, you've done this how long ago? Uh, about just, just... 10 months ago. Oh, it's still holding. Normally you had movement within three months, so you've done a good job. <laughs> there was a barbecue you said you knocked down. Well, was the that? barbecue is gone. Okay, it's gone where, to the was it, was it here? No, no, it was around the corner. Okay. It was around the corner so in, yeah. inside, inside... Inside this the, area? Yeah, it was solid brick. It was three metres long, metre high, um, metre and a half wide, and uh, it took a lot of actual uh, muscle power to actually demand You two it. knocked it down, eh? Yeah. With a sledgehammer, Will Burrows carted it out, yes, got rid of it. Yes, that nice hill up here and all the way out. Wow. Very good exercise. There wasn't a wood oven by any chance? No. No, no you no. wouldn't have knocked that down. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> OK. It was a fair like income a... brick barbecue. It was, but okay. it took a lot of... It was very bulky and it took out a lot of light yeah. also. Sounds funny, well, it sounds like it was a, a no, wall of barbecue. No, it was up to this yeah. height. It was, it was yeah. like that. Up to that height. Just right all the way around. Yeah. Inside, and um, it was... Uh, overkill. Uh, in total overkill. It was yeah. brown, dark brown, yes. and with, with blue tiles on the top. Oh, and it just okay. sucked the lights <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> right. But I see a beautiful uh, aviary here. Can we have a look inside here? Hello, Jess. This is Jazzy. Hello, That's sweetie. Boy, girl. Jazzy's this a girl. Is a boy. They're oh, all boys boy. in here. Oh, they're all boys. They've all got that strong peach Hello. color on their chest. <laughs> oh, you're gorgeous. Hello. How are you going? He loves whistles. If oh. you whistle to him, he'll sing with you. He loves singing this one, and this one loves scratches. You see, they all have their toys here. Yeah. On the sisal rope. This is safe for them, the sisal rope. And, um, and this is Tony. Hello, Tony. A recent adoptee. Yes. But you always have them separate for a couple of weeks first to ensure that there's no health problems. OK. And also, you know, having a new friend in their existing home, they won't just accept anyone. It takes okay. time. I'm in here. No, but that's fine. That's, <laughs> that's fine. Okay. That's this okay. one's OK? This is Cheeky Boy. Oh, he's, cheeky oh boy. yeah, he's cheeky. He, oh, he won't bite. He, no? he, he just likes the nail. OK. He if likes I give nails. Him... These are gorgeous. And you've always been in love with birds, you know, caring for birds? Well, I think most of us had birds since we were very young. Yes. I've had birds now for at least 18, 20, 18 years at least. Yeah. Different types of birds, canaries, budgies, but I don't breed them. Okay. I don't feel we need to breed them. There are too many birds out there that need to be adopted and saved. Okay. It's far too many. We do, really, really don't need to breed more birds. Um, companion birds. Companion birds, yes. that's right, yes. Oh, you want to scratch, do you? And, um, and I just rescue them from, uh, really, rehome them from other people who can't look after them okay. anymore. Yeah. Whether they're moving into state or they have dogs and they can't let the birds out free. Yes. They have them in small cages and they know that's wrong. Yes. That's very wrong. Yeah. So um, this is a temporary home for them at the moment. This is not their proper home. We will be building a much yeah. bigger home for them. OK. So um, the more they can fly, the better. They're beautiful. Trying to create a, a, a nice little um, hedge. hedge of Lunicera. Um, yeah, which. Oh, sorry, uh, this is Legustrum. Yes, I believe yeah. so. Yes. And um, slowly it's it's starting to take off. You know? So you, you get full sun here in, during oh, summertime. Yes. And, and it actually drops quite low early in the, in the day. And you've got some citrus trees, but it's a wet area. But that's raised, so the wet area is down here. Down here. Yeah. And the and, lemon and tree this, is struggling. This is really struggling. Yeah. Can you relocate? No, you can. No. Well, you can relocate it. It's it's more the case that it's not breathing enough underneath. That's all it is. But so, this is a lovely area. Love it. It's beautiful. So we, you know, we it, it's it's slowly coming along. You know, but um, it was for it was, fourteen months. You you've done wonders already. From what you're telling me, I can only imagine what it was like beforehand. And all these plants, they're, they're relatively young, and you can see, and I, I can see how in two years from today, these are going to be amazing to look at. The, the, the hedge there with the azaleas in the background and camellias again. Yeah. You've got some amazing specimens at the front there. You were showing me earlier, and I'd love for you all to have a look at this huge weeping cherry tree that you've done some 
manicuring on to allow the rhododendrons and camellias to start blossoming underneath. Yeah, it's a, it, it's it's uh, to allow the light to come through. Yeah, and you know we, we've. Uh, created an environment where the light can come through yeah. and all of a sudden you start to get in colour. Yeah. And the yeah. colour's been fantastic. The colour. The colours are wonderful. And the other, one other plant I want to ask you about is the one that's growing on the wall there. Are you happy with it? No, I don't like that <laughs> at all. If, if, I, if I could, I don't want to hurt Philip's feelings, I would just rip it out. I can't see what it, what's the purpose of it. It's beautiful. It's just a, it's a connection between you know structural, man-made, and nature. Nature. Are you are kidding. <laughs> you are kidding. I don't like it at all. It's an absolutely beautiful plant. It gives um, coolness during the summer, That's right. and it just looks. Fantastic. And it gives you something the to do. It lovely. makes an absolute mess, Vasily. Absolute mess. The leaves. The, and it actually gives door. me so much mulch. Have a look, folks. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, it gives you mulch you can put back into the garden. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, and then that's it gives a you a point. job to do when you've got nothing else to do. No, Philip can collect the mulch since <laughs> well, that's his favourite. You like plant. painting? No, that's his job. Okay. <laughs> what keeps everyone busy? <laughs> you angry and the debate going? <laughs> I'll, I'll just initiate the project and. Well, it, it's only over. just here, isn't it, at the moment? No, it goes all around the house. You'll, you'll see the mess it makes. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Look where it's reached. I know, and it's even blocked the bathroom, um, Philip's bathroom upstairs. No, you, Imagine you, if it goes to mine. Open your window, let it come inside, because well, it, it gets cold. It has, it's gone on the screen. <laughs> It's nice. And we had to trim it back. No, it's shocking. It's absolutely fantastic. Oh. I'm in the middle of this one. I like it, but I don't want to hurt your no. feelings. No, no, don't don't get feelings. I want logic. I want to take you around the front and see what you right. really think. Come and take me around. Here we go. If it's really worthwhile having this plant. All right, let's have a look. the mess. This is what happens when you leave your garden for a few weeks. Well, actually a couple of months, I think it is. Now, everything has basically overgrown, died off, weeds have taken over. We've got a mess in every garden bed here, folks. We've got to do a big, seriously, a big cleanup. We've got to pull out all the weeds, all the dead plants, cut back what's still alive and looks like it's going to come back good by springtime, and then turn the soil over, see if it needs a feed, and then get ready for springtime because it's only just around the corner. We've got six weeks, not even five weeks now to prepare for spring. And there's a big job ahead of us here. So sit back, relax and enjoy me doing some serious cleaning in this little veggie garden of mine. <music> Folks, by the time I finish cleaning this garden, it's going to be springtime. Hey Jack, come and help me mate. I need some help. Look at this garden bed. Now we had some tomatoes, capsicums, chilies, things like that, nasturtiums, celery growing in here. And now apart from the weeds, you can see the celery still going big and strong. So is the nasturtium. Big tamarillo plant, so for those who think the frost can knock them out, have a look at that one. Not a problem at all. We've got our little friend here, the Kelpie, Jack, joining in to help us in the garden. In a little bit of time. So when you've got plants like this still thriving, clean up around them, maybe print them back a bit, get some air into them again so you can see what's going on exactly underneath them because they're quite bushy, uh, and then start turning the soil over again. So this is the first of many beds that I've got to clean here, folks. See the colony? Okay, have a look at this. Snail City here, folks. Uh, the chooks and the ducks are gonna love this. Oh, we're making snail soup. Yuck. Crunchy. Job done. Look what we've got growing in here, folks. We've got the celery, nasturtiums, we've got parsley growing in here. We've got seed here that's about to spread everywhere again. So we're going to get more celery and parsley growing everywhere. But we've still got a vine here. 
It's one of those gourds that we've had growing here wild. We've got an old capsicum in here too that's still struggling to survive, so we may be able to bring this one back to life. Just got to clean up around it. Look what I found. Another one. These are the lawn grubs that we tell you about earlier. They, they normally live in lawns, but now they're in everyone's veggie garden. So look out for them. If you see these, guaranteed they're destroying your plants from underneath. So you can either dig them up, get yourself a couple of chooks, they'll find them for you, or you have to use a chemical to get rid of them. But you don't want any veggies in the garden when you do that. That's what they look like. This is a baby. I've made the decision. She's starting to come out. There's too many of these little boys in here. Too much celery leaf. There's only so much celery I can eat, folks. Now I can see everything. Uh, as much as I love you, my flowering plant. It's just look at that. Look at this tiny little root ball. Tiny, tiny little root ball. You get this humongous plant on top. Well, we're going to hang you up to dry and eat you. <laughs> yeah. All right, folks. Garden bed number one's done. We left one celery plant in it and a parsley in a bit of time. This is garden bed number two. Quick, folks! Catch your snails, they're on the run. They're trying to escape. All right. Middle of winter and we're still growing. Get you out of here, boy. You're in my way. All right. Well, we've had to sacrifice a few capsicums because they did go past a use-by date. And obviously they were choked by other surrounding plants and weeds. Some that are okay, we're gonna keep. Train up now, as you can see, I'm lifting them up with a couple of bamboo stakes. And now, I'm gonna go around and cut them back to healthy growth. And hopefully, Come springtime, they spread up again, lots of leaves and flowers, and you get more capsicums. But before we do that, in springtime, we're going to test the soil, its pH level, to see what type of nutrients exist in the soil, if it needs to be fertilised again, or maybe some garden lime added to it just to balance it out. All right, I've had enough of you guys. It's time to go to lunch. Nice, crunchy. Look at these mandarins. Uh, we've done two beds, now we've got this one over here, which had rocket growing in it, some beans growing in it, and it looks like we've got chocolate mint and weeds growing in it. I think everything's just got to come out of here, folks. Just pull everything out and start again. And then we've got those two beds over there, again, celery leaf, and we've got the kale growing. The kale, I think we could salvage, but everything else has got to come out. Have a look at this. Look at all these runners. It's all the chocolate mint. Look, this is all running in from underneath. It's planted over there as a little seedling, and it's basically taken over the entire veggie garden here. Now, if you want to grow mint, chocolate mint or spearmint, keep it away from the rest of your plants, folks, because it can basically take over. It's invasive. It'll throw runners everywhere from underneath the surface and suffocate every other plant from growing. One plant becomes a million, not one or two. It becomes a million. Look at it all. This is one plant. And I guarantee you, you might think I'm destroying it, but in actual fa fact, by springtime, this will be full again. There's no way I can get any all these runners out of the ground. I'll try my best, but not all of them. Have a look at it, it's a mess. What's left of last year's tomatoes. And have a look at these cows. If I go like this, have a look at it all. White fly everywhere, folks. Now, white fly is called white because it's got a white waxy powder on the, on the surface of its body. It's normally grey in colour and not active during winter. But for some reason, 
These things have acclimatised to every type of weather condition we have here, and I can only imagine what they're like in the warmer days of the of the year, what they're going to be like. So this has to be controlled. You really got to put an oil-based spray to suffocate it. Nothing really sticks to its out outer coating surf, surface coating because it's waxy, powder wax. And if you have a close look at here, they're, they're here by the thousands, and they multiply so quickly overnight. We've tried predator control here, but it hasn't worked. They've really taken a strong hold of this garden here. So these need to be sprayed with an eco oil or eco neem regularly, and I'm going to have to start doing that now to control them because by the time, by the time spring comes, we're in trouble. After you finish cleaning out the weeds from your veggie garden, before you go out and buy manures and fertilizers to add into your garden bed again, do a pH test to see if it's acidic or alkaline, because sometimes you might not need to add any fertilizers or manures because uh, the soil's already rich. And then sometimes it might be too alkaline and you actually need to add more when you think it's already got enough manure in it. And what we do is, my favorite way is using the, uh, the liquid and powder form. This is the Manutech kit, most effective one. There are other types on the market, but this is the one I like. You get yourself a little testing pad. I use this little plant tag as my uh, spoon to pick up and you get a measuring chart here, which gives you the colors and the pH levels. Completely purple is alkaline, and as it decreases in alkalinity, it goes to the green section over here. It goes in a neutral area, which is a very popular area for most plants, and as it starts to go yellow, that's increasing in acidity level. And if you get down to these colors here, which is the end result color that you get, that tells you your soil's way too hot. It's basically on fire. Anything that you're gonna try growing there will cook. Burns on the tips of the leaves, where in the opposite case, if it's too purple or too alkaline for plants that don't like alkaline soil, they'll start to yellow off in the leaves. So they're, they're the basic signs you get from the plant to tell you that the soil needs to be treated. So what we need to do is take a teaspoon's worth of soil from about three inches below the surface, place it on a testing pad, add a little bit of the liquid into it to moisten the soil, just like that. Mix it through so it's evenly spread. We add the powder, which is barium sulfate which will basically give you the indication of what the soil is. After a couple of seconds, the color will come through. Take your indicator pad and find the right color to match. Have a look at that. We've got nothing but alkaline soil here. It's very alkaline, which means we need to add some manure to increase the acidity. I want to get it around the seven, which is that green, gray, gray co green color. Around that area there is perfect for the plants. Although you can say the plants did perform very well here, increasing the acidity level to get it to more neutral is gonna be perfect for all the plants we plant out here in springtime. So a little bit of manure, but I'm not gonna add that now. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so a little bit of manure, but I'm not gonna add that today. I'm gonna to finish cleaning out the rest of these veggie garden beds, get them ready, turn them over, and next week when we come back, we're gonna add the manure and test the soil again and see if we can increase the acidity level to get it right where we want it from Eva Silly. Parece. Well, it was, Look. not anymore. What's that doing? It's just... <laughs> is that what's going on here? <laughs> well, he's not no, around. She's ripping that. off. <laughs> well, it's, it's in the view of the window. And it's annoying me. I don't like it. Look at this. Look. All these little feet that have been yeah. left behind, all the spores, they were once little runners, weren't they? You should have seen how it was before. Philip cleaned it up really nicely. But look, look, what is this? And look around here, Vasily. Look, it's taken over lo like a jungle plant. Look at that. I mean, oh, but come this on. is when beautiful it's... the way yeah. it was. Yeah. But you can see all the leaves that come down, it just trashes the whole area. Look, look how far it travels. Look, look at the but... mess. I mean, I just can't see. Yeah, well, you're not going to get up there and clean it, are you? We, we, who did that? Did you do it or did we get someone to do it? Of course I did it all. It? We have, this has been trimmed back for silly. This wasn't like this. This I is this it. is actually a beautiful like climber. It? It's a beautiful climber. It enhances the whole house and it enhances mm. the property and it gives us, um, um, what's the word, something that's very distinctive. You know what he likes about it? When the green leaves come out, come out. it's very Mediterranean. Yes. And he loves that Mediterranean. That, How can that you take that away from the man? He loves that. No, you can't take that away <laughs> from the man. Plus the fact that when it actually drops its leaves, it gives me all the mulch that I need that I've actually developed down in the back corner you are. and re-dig it into the garden. <laughs> okay, I'm convinced. I'm easy, I'm convinced. We are under one beautiful specimen here, folks. We're talking about a cherry tree, and this was, or is a weeper. Yes. But how many years old would it be? Look, I have no idea, but 
It's got to be 30 years old, at, at least, least, at if least. not more. That's the graft, that's the rootstock mm. that we're looking at the base, and where the graft occurred, you can see the trunk itself is slightly narrow in diameter. Now, you've done a lot of work on this, I've as done, far as structure. I've done a lot of work on it to actually try and give it some shape, yeah. and to allow it to actually expand a little bit, yeah. and, um, and, and, balance. and balance it yeah. off. Um, you know, it's still a little bit unbalanced, but I mean, it's just been doing bit by bit. Six, eight metres. It's got an eight metre stretch, oh. what I see here, at least on one side. And that's a radius we're talking about. So if you were to take a tape measure from one side to the other, at least 16, to 16 metres, it'd have to be. Oh, easily. Easy. Easily. Easy. But it, uh, when it flowers, it is absolutely beautiful. What colour? Uh, it's, it's a whitey, pinky colour. Yeah, okay. it, it's more white now yeah. than pink. I think it probably was a bit more pinky. Yeah. But, it's, uh, uh, but you can tell by the branches that yeah. it's actually an old tree. But when you're sitting up on the balcony up there or yeah. sitting out here of an afternoon, yeah. having a coffee or a yeah. cold drink, yeah. it's, it's beautiful in, in, yeah. uh, when it's flowering. Well, what we've had to do here is because it was so overgrown that way, yeah. we've actually cut the branches off on that side to allow the light to get in for the camellia and the rhododendron to grow. And, and in the last six months, they've actually started to grow. And, oh, uh, oh, so the gut, wait a second, have a look at this. So yeah. that's leaning over into the driveway. Correct, and that was going that way because oh, the, the branches tree. were so far over there. And they were stretching out for the sunlight. Yeah, and I'm trying to now pull Bring it back. back. Bring yeah. it back. Bit I can by see bit. it's hanging over basically literally half the plant, if oh, not yeah, two yeah. thirds of its past. If, over if you there. come down this way, Let's you can look. see it a little more. With these Manchurian pears, when we when we first arrived here, they were they were just everywhere. Well, that's Branches, what they do. They yeah, grow wide, wild, you know, and yeah. and, yeah. and uh, on that side and this side, and, and uh, so what we've progressively done is actually trim them on both sides and trying to get a bit of an arch. I can see that's, the arch. Yeah, You're getting a few good limbs coming out there correct. to create that. So when they come into full bloom or leaf, does it, you can see, do you get enough covering over the top here? We get just about, it just about covers Reaches. the whole lot. Yeah. And you know, in the springtime with the, the white flower that, yeah. that appears and then going into the grief, it's yeah. actually, the vista is amazing. Yeah. And on the ground too, you see the beautiful white flower. I had to cut the top off it because the wind broke the top. Yeah. Um, That'll be fine. But that's coming along all right. So with these ones, so you just keep the lower branches to come upright, structure yeah. them so they don't hang over so far. Yeah. And then once they go nice and rigid, you won't have to worry about too much pruning on this. And so this is your little bok veggie choy. garden. Is our bok, bok choy. choy that the birds have to eat yep. every day. Yep. That they eat. We've and got our chilies, we've got our... Kale, yep. that's the kale. Curly leaf, um, yeah. The green capsicums. Carrots. Carrots, yes, and you'll see here they're already starting to come up. They're good. Look at that, we've got some nice carrots coming yeah. up. Beetroot. Look at all the beetroot. Look, love beetroot, beetroot juice. I love the leaves, never it's throw the leaves out. It. Eggplants. Oh, what, you mean you eat the... Eat the leaves, leaves, yeah. What, you boil them and... Yes, you, yeah, blanched. I just, don't think you could. I know you can eat You can. Part, eat every part. You can. Every part. Really? Enjoy. Enjoy. Oh, you really can. Capsicum still. Don't throw anything out. Oh, All right. And don't, and don't chuck out your capsicums either. Just cut no, them no, back no. and let them come up again in springtime. Right, OK. Yep. And, the and silver bead. And, and spring, spring onions. onions. And we got there. Because we, we like that. Well, you know, you, for three quarters of an acre, you've, I'm glad you've allocated a section of <laughs> some edibles. Was it very productive for you? We, we were. To, yeah. Sorry, we had tomatoes. Yep. We had tomato. I did not buy anything during summer. No veggies. Good. No That's veggies. Fantastic. We had tomatoes. We had corn. Yeah. We had a lot of corn. Nice. Um, what else did we have? We had eggplants. Eggplants yeah. that I sent through. So you basically lived out of your garden yes. for the whole spring yes. summertime. Yes. Yes. yes totally. Absolutely. And it, it doesn't take a lot of work once you actually get it moving. Yeah. And you know, yes, at the moment I've got you know peas straw and you things have like. You have your downtimes. Yeah. And this is what it is. And that's how it is with everybody. I see the lemongrass, that is excellent. And remember to use it before it gets too woody. Yeah. yeah. Just chop it up into small bits and put okay. it into your stir fry. Right, okay. It is excellent. So you peel the outside skin. Right, so yeah. how do I do it? Right. See, now you just peel out the outer, outer uh, layers. Right. And this inner layer here is all you need, basically. The soft succulent part. Chop all that up in there right. and add it into your right. cooking for right. flavour. Yeah. It's just little rings, like little O-rings. Yes, yes. That's all you need to do. Right, I was expecting oh. them to grow thicker, you see. You, you can, but the thicker it grows, the more layers you have to peel off. So right. you start from now and oh, it just helps them multiply even more. So that's got plenty of flavour in it. I can smell it from here. Oh, thank you. There you go. Yeah, enjoy. 
Overall, guys, a wonderful job. For what you've told me, what it was before and to what it's turned into now, and I can only say it's only going to get better and better for you. Thank yes, you. yeah. Thank you very much, and it's certainly, uh, it's very enjoyable. <laughs> It is, isn't it? Relaxing. Lovely. It gets you away from the crazy stuff that goes on in the rest of the world yes. and brings you back to nature, bonding with it. Yeah, and something to look forward to at the end of the day. Yes. Exactly. And yeah. it's also, it's very good. It's uh, fitness-wise, yeah. mowing the lawns, you know. Yeah. You actually uh, enjoy coming home. Yeah, you would, yeah. Just that's enjoy. beautiful. Well, congratulations. Thank you. All that's missing is me. Oh, is, thank you. Is, 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 is one here is hungry. When, well, we have plenty of tucker inside. <laughs> All right, let's go inside. Get out of the cold. Please. Good on you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful time out here at Mount Eliza with Philip and Paris. We've enjoyed ourselves. Thank you for the wonderful afternoon tea. Almost dinner now because the sun's gone. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank We're you. We're freezing to death too. Well, we are. Here's a hamper bag. Thank you so <laughs> Includes much. Includes the ice blocks inside. No, that's oh, just frozen water. Wow. Thank <laughs> Enjoy. You. All right. Well, we're at that time of the end of the show, which is the Zorba time. You ready for it? Sure. Are. Let's go for <laughs> it. Maresi, <laughs> see you next week. <laughs>